Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me today on this uh, live uh, webinar on this uh, very valuable subject on how to manage uh, anxiety, stress, and even fear in our lives. So, you know, we all live a very active life, I assume, and we have a lot of pressures and responsibilities. Um, so this can contribute uh, to stress and anxiety. But fortunately, um, there's a lot of home remedies, uh, even uh, dietary guidelines, and most effectively, many, many herbal cures. So we're going to first cover um, what increases our anxiety uh, and ultimately makes us more stressed. And because there is always stress in life, it's just our ability to manage it, and keep it in control in our own minds that doesn't create anxiety and ultimately fear. So we're going to talk about that first because that's really the best treatment of all is to remove the causes of your anxiety. So, um, and then we'll talk about different herbs. So first let's talk about uh, typical uh, causes of uh, provoking or increasing anxiety in our lives. And we're going to start with a, the incorrect diet. That's right. Uh, most people, you know, if you're somewhat healthy and eating organic food, which is a good start, and avoiding junk food, fast food, and GMOs, this is good. Um, but there's more to it than that, particularly if you have anxiety and um, nervousness, which can result in many uh, symptoms, which we're going to talk about, including tingling, numbness, you know, racing heart, heart palpitations, insomnia, dizziness, and lightheadedness. See, these are many signs of this type of imbalance, we could say, of our, our whole system is to have some of these experiences, you know, just being spacey, lightheaded, tingling numbness, spastic nerves, and of course, uh, a racing heart, fast heart, and it could even uh, Parkinson's or you have trembling or multiple sclerosis. So all these are somewhat in the same category. And we're talking about the nervous system because it's the nervous system that's supporting the mind. See, so if the nervous system is stimulated, the mind and the thinking will be stimulated. If the nervous system is well supported and calm and uh, both on a nutritional level um, and on emotional level, then, you know, our mind will be calm. So we're really discussing an imbalance of the nervous system. So that's why I say all of these symptoms, tingling, numbness, uh, heart palpitations, dizziness, lightheaded, spacey, black, blanking out, anxiety, fear, uh, racing thoughts, even tinnitus, and of course, something like Parkinson's are all in the same category. And Ayurveda would just call this uh, uh, vata in our uh, nervous system or mejidatsu. So that's what we're talking about. An imbalance of our nervous system that's creating this category of symptoms and anxiety just being the most obvious one. So if you have many of those symptoms, then, um, then definitely this uh, course will be valuable for you. So back to diet. Then we have to think of our diet, particularly if you have many of these symptoms that we just talked about, this lightheadedness, and anxiety, worry, overthinking, insomnia. Um, that means we need what's called a vata pacifying diet. And a vata pacifying diet is warm foods, not cold foods. Cold foods are depleting and more difficult to digest. And we want easy to digest foods. That's cooked foods, not raw foods. And we want heavy foods, not light foods. So that's like sweet potato, not lettuce. So a person eating smoothies, which are cold and light and trying to lose weight and having lettuce and salads instead of heavier foods has a greater tendency towards nervousness and anxiety. Just think when you fast, when you don't eat, uh, all day long, you become lightheaded, spacey, and uh, ultimately you become anxious, nervous, fearful, and even anger 
can result from just not eating. So if you're eating too light or too much of a vata provoking diet, we could say in Ayurveda, then you're going to increase your own anxiety. And this is the most common mistake I see with people who have anxiety. They think, oh, I'm eating good. I'm eating healthy. But in fact, they're not eating the right foods for their own constitution or body type or dosha. And that's, we're referring, of course, to the person who's thin, light, cold, and dry in nature, more vata, prakriti or vata type of person, just like this uh, picture right there, the thin, light, dry type of person. They're the ones most susceptible. So they need to have balancing foods that balance out their tendency to be too light and airy and spacey and ungrounded. So what they need is grounding foods. And often they do better on uh, animal protein. Uh, even this type of person who's thin and maybe only 100 pounds or even underweight or having difficulty gaining weight shouldn't be vegetarian. They should have some animal protein, some cheese, some ghee, and even some oily fish, some dark chicken meat. And these are more grounding. So this type of person on a who's thin, not maybe only 100 pounds or not uh, uh, overweight for sure, possibly underweight from an Ayurvedic perspective, and is spacey, lightheaded, easy to be have anxious and feel panic attacks, should never skip meals, should have even four meals a day, and shouldn't be having salads and cold foods, should have warm foods like oatmeal for breakfast with butter and honey and some nuts and some you know, grounding food, maybe even a piece of toast with egg on top. So they feel grounded and secure so they can begin their day. And then they shouldn't go all day without eating. They should again have warm meal, stew, soup, well-cooked rice, fish, or lentils with mild spices, cinnamon, ginger, black pepper, onions, garlic, and should focus those vegetables on root vegetables like sweet potatoes, carrots, beets, not leafy greens and not flowers like cabbage family, broccoli, cauliflower. These are flowers. They make you light. They're good for weight loss and somebody who feels heavy. There are people who feel heavy, slow, lethargic, and depressed, more of a kapha type of imbalance. Well, they do very good on eating salads and cabbage and lettuce and you know things that are light leaves and stems and flowers of the plant. But no, if you want to be grounded and often put on weight and feel your feet on the ground, then you need to have three, even four meals a day of warm, heavy, somewhat oily food. And so this is very common where I see people who are not eating in this manner and this is contributing to their own anxiety. And often it's people trying to lose weight who often don't need to lose weight. Uh, maybe they're just a few pounds overweight or not happy with the shape of their thighs and they're dieting, skipping meals, eating salads, um, not having any grains. I've seen this creates a lot of anxiety. And we know from nutritional science that the grains, the rice, the wheat has all of our uh, B vitamins, which support our nervous system. So too little grains, too little protein, too little fat, just basically not enough food, skipping meals, eating too light, grazing all day instead of full meals. All of this will contribute to more anxiety. In fact, I've had people who are quite overweight, even up to 300 pounds, and then they went grain free. And uh, then they came and saw me and they said, well, I think the grain free diet and only eating once a day and having just salad lost weight, but now I'm having trouble sleeping. And for the first time in my life, I'm having anxiety. So even a person who's overweight, if you just stop eating or stop having food, you can start to feel anxious in just one day. So if every day you're skipping meals, forcing yourself not to eat much because you're trying to lose weight, and then you can create more anxiety. <laughs> so that's the first thing to do is to eat. Uh, and, and eat the foods that are suitable for you, that feel good for you. And next is don't 
overexert yourself. That's right. If you're running marathons and you're running really fast then you, and burning up all your so-called calories, um, then you're going to feel deplete yourself. Many people feel uh, uh, de depleted or are depleted all the time. And this is actually due to excess exertion. What's excess ex exertion? Uh, running five miles every day uh, can uh, overexert yourself. This type of person who has anxiety um, and nervousness, you know, they shouldn't be running. They should be walking. Or if they have a lot of anxiety and they're underweight, should be just taking a nap in the middle of the day. But unfortunately, we see people overexerting themselves. Other ways to overexerting yourself, of course, overworking. Just working all day. And of course, if you combine that with working all day, pushing yourself all day and not eating, then you're making a recipe for anxiety. Even if you're not prone to it, try overstressing yourself, working all day and not eating. And most people will become anxious, particularly if you do it day in and day out. And also too much sexual activity. I know that's sad. That's sad. But it doesn't say no sexual activity. It says too much because you're depleting yourself, uh, losing your, your reproductive fluids. And this is draining for the system and takes more nutrients, more eating to replenish your uh, tissue and your reproductive fluids, we could say. And if you have sexual activity again and again and again, before the body's able to reproduce more sexual fluids, reproductive fluids, then you're going to deplete yourself. So I would say that most people with anxiety who come to me are depleted. They've uh, overworking, over over exercising, and not eating enough. And this is a major reason. Sec third, we could say, so first you got to get the diet right. Then you can't be pushing yourself too much. Third, you need to be resting. You need to be sleeping. Uh, of course, it kind of goes hand in hand with this overworking. We tend to overwork, over push, and then work right up to the night. And this type of person who has anxiety, restlessness, and poor sleep, guess what? They get up really early in the morning. And what do they do? Work more. So this continuous working um, and then working late, getting up early, not sleeping much, or just not sleeping well can be another uh, cause of anxiety. And I'm sure all of us have stayed up late at night, missed a night, we're on a plane all night or a train all night, didn't sleep all night. Well, guess what? The next day, you're much more vulnerable to feeling anxiety and nervousness. So eat good, sleep good, and don't push yourself too much. And then number four, don't stimulate yourself too much. How do could we stimulate ourselves too much? Of course, coffee. How many times have people come to me and said, oh, I have anxiety, nervousness, and poor sleep, but I only have one cup of coffee. Well, it's still stimulating. This is the type of person who's probably already very active, uh, moving all day, working very hard, very productive, getting a lot done. They don't need this cup of coffee. They need to relax and to slow down, not speed up. And yes, that cup of coffee is in you for a few days, just like um, any type of drug or in your body. It's remaining in your body, in your bloodstream for a couple days. So, And it's cumulative. So if every day you have a cup of coffee, every day you have a cup of coffee, you're actually accumulating more caffeine in your system. So uh, you want to get rid of this number one stimulant, any source of caffeine. Uh, black tea, green tea, coffee, herba mate, a Red Bull, you know, anything that's stimulating. And of course, that would include also chocolate. That's right. Chocolate, cacao, even though I know people have advocated it as being high in magnesium and having other health benefits, but it's still very stimulating. So maybe a little bit after your dinners, not too bad, but I think a lot of us become uh, attached to our coffee as a source to stimulate ourselves. The next big stimulant we see, of course, is sugar, sweets. Now, if you, of course you put the sugar in the coffee, <laughs> now you've got a double whammy or the sugar in the chocolate. Now you got two stimulants going. 
maybe I think nowadays you can get a cup of coffee with the chocolate, with the sugar, all mixed together. <laughs> so, you know, this is very stimulating. And I'm not saying that coffee's bad or cacao's bad. Again, if we take the other type of person, the more heavy, slow, dense, slow person, kapha prakriti or kapha body type, who tends to be a little overweight or full bodied, um, they are slow, slow heart rate, slow to get going, slow worker, slow to get out the door, always a little late, starting, you know, work late, sleeping like a rock, can't get up in the morning. Well, for that type of person, coffee could be just fine. So I tell many overweight kapha types, keep your coffee fine. In fact, that is their whole breakfast. If you're overweight and trying to have no energy, you can have your cup of coffee and an apple, and that is your whole breakfast. But this would be a disaster for somebody who's thin, anxious, nervous to have coffee and an apple. <laughs> so even if it's organic, I know it sounds better when it's organic, but it's still stimulated. And even you take out the caffeine, there's other aspects to coffee that make it drying and depleted. So if you're depleted in any way, dry skin, dehydrated, um, then you could also be contributing to your nervousness and anxiety, which you may first see in symptoms like tingling, numbness. It's the signs that your nervous system is uh, depleted when you have this tingling, numbness, and even these muscle cramps. It's also showing your muscles are depleted. So um, other causes of... Um, of excess stimulation, tobacco, um, other drugs, of course, amphetamines, uh, marijuana, alcohol, they all have their stimulating aspect to them. Um, and of course, um, if you've had any type of job that's uh, creating stress and pressure in you, then this can be contributing to. But what you first want to do is focus on your diet, your lifestyle, your eating habits, and be eating good, taking a break when you eat, not eating while standing, not eating quickly, not chewing quickly, and uh, and slowing down, going to bed earlier, and getting rid of the stimulus. That's the first step. That's like trying to remove the cause. Before you take the herbs, you know, before you take the herbal treatment, which we're going to cover, herbs, herbs working just fine. But if you have insomnia and I give you sleeping tea or sleeping formula and you're drinking coffee all day, you're not going to get a good results. So it's the same with anxiety. If you're I can give you herbs to relax, herbs to help you calm down, oils to put on your body that are relaxing and calming. But if you're having uh, too much stimulation in your life or not eating full meals and then you will not get a good effect because you have, these are your causes. Okay, so next we can talk about um, what we can do. Let's talk about some home remedies first, simple home remedies that you can do at home. Okay, so now you know you can't work till midnight, you gotta get to sleep and you gotta relax. You need a good light sleep. So let's focus on the sleep. A lot of times people who have anxiety and nervousness aren't sleeping very well. So let's, tonight, it's already the evening. So we can focus on sleep. First, take a bath, a salt bath, not a shower. Shower is not as relaxing as a bath. And it's dry and you dry out your skin. So go take a bath, put in some salt because that salt with that um, uh, sodium helps the muscles relax. And of course, in there, you could put a little lavender oil, chamomile, essential oil right in the bath. And this will help you relax. And turn all the lights off and put a candle in there. Candle is also very relaxing. You got to turn off all these bright lights and, and use candles. Candles are very relaxing. And then you can do your salt bath. Maybe you can drink some relaxing tea or some sleeping tea too uh, and in right in there and take this bath. And uh, then maybe if you have a nice partner, you could also get an oil massage. Now, that would be good. You know, get the nice bath first then get the oil massage, then go in your candlelit room and get all the electronics out of there. The phone, the Wi-Fi, the computer, everything out of the bedroom. We know a bedroom's only good for two things. And uh, one is sleep. So 
we don't need all the computers in there. And this is, you know, all stimulating electromagnetic frequencies, cell phones, computers, TV, the news. This is all stimulating. So, you know, all of these stimulating things need to be turned off. And you can put on some ambient music. You know, now I found on Spotify a little channel called Sleep Deep. And, whoa, it's very sleepy. And you put that Sleep Deep channel on with the candlelight after the bath and a warm oil massage, even if you had to do it yourself, and drink my sleeping tea, then you're going to sleep like a baby. And if you get that nice good night's sleep and you wake up not to an alarm, but wake up when you're ready, when you've slept until you're fully rested, then you're off to a good start. Then the next day, you only have to focus on eating and not overworking and, uh, and not thinking too much. Because thinking is often the major cause of anxiety too. Thinking too much. Our minds thinking, thinking, thinking. We're often thinking about things we cannot control. So if you cannot control it, you cannot control the weather, you cannot control the virus, you cannot even control your boss. So these things we shouldn't think about. We just have to live with them. So if you can't control it, don't think about it. It doesn't help. You better to focus on doing the things that you can do to keep yourself relaxed and calm. So if you do all these things and then you take some herbs, you will find wonderful results. So let's look at some simple herbs here. Here's a nice herb to start with. And you can see we just got plenty of it here. That's two pounds of passion flower there. You could just have passion flower tea all by itself and you're going to feel calm. It's a very, it's a nervine basically and supports the nervous system. If you don't have passion flower, um, even just lavender. In fact, this is the English lavender. It's got a very nice smell and you can get this lavender and put it in a little pouch and put it right in your bed. It's very, very effective for children. In fact, you know, babies, crying babies and, you know, you get a little lavender, put it in a little cotton pouch and just put it right in the crib with them and the smell will make them relax. Um, and of course, more famous herb, this has also got more of a sedative quality as well as relaxing is chamomile. That's right. It's a flower. And yeah, even the smell is very nice. We also have chamomile essential oil. This is Roman chamomile right there, essential oil. And that's uh, very nice. You can get a little bit of this and put a few drops right in your uh, bathtub and even get a few drops and just put it right under your nose like that. Oh, I better stop. I will go asleep in my own webinar here. So, and... Um, I would use salt instead of magnesium in the bath. You know, just, I think it's better. It's more, got more minerals in it. But if you only have, you know, uh, Epsom salts, then throw it in the tub. Go ahead, use it. Um, so here's a few other herbs. Here's a tea we make. And this is the simple tea. And you don't need all these ingredients. And remember, you don't have to have all of these herbs. You only need one or two or three that work. Now, formulas tend to work better when we stick five or six together. It tends to be more effective, you know, when there's multiple herbs uh, together taken. But here's a, our calming and relaxing tea. That's just what the whole webinar is about. Uh, re reduces anxiety and helps you manage stress better. And there's the first herb right there, lemon balm. It's only of the mint family. It's a mild nervine. And skull cap, skull cap is uh, definitely um, a, a good nervine and sedative. Catnip, if you've ever seen cats play with it, they really um, enjoy that. It's a little bit intoxicating to the cat. Motherwort, we also use motherwort for lowering blood pressure. So motherwort really helps with heart palpitations and helps the heart muscles relax. So it's in the heart tea as well. As well. Lavender, which is I brought up, passion flower, one of the main ingredients, and then oat straw. Oat straw is like food for the nerves. It's mild uh, nervine. It's not going to make you sleepy, but it supports the nervous system. And now they've done research and they realize that the oat straw has a lot of vitamin B, a lot of magnesium, 
all these minerals and vitamins that we need for our nervous system. And I just supported it here with a little rosemary, which is like a catalyst, kind of making it work better. And then I put in rose petals just to make it smell beautiful and taste good. And cinnamon, also kind of like a catalyst, kind of just bring making a little warm, bringing the effects of all these substances together and making them work better very nice so instead of having coffee all day long what you can have all day long is relaxing tea so if you sleep good at night cut the coffee out cut the sugar out and then you drink the relaxing tea all day long you're going to go to bed earlier and you're going to have a life without as much anxiety now we have some other herbs that are more sedative like poppy seed California poppy seed. Yep. Now it's legal here in California because it grows in California. But it is illegal in some countries because it's related to, of course, the poppy. Some countries uh, don't allow you to import poppy seeds. Now it's a pretty strong sedative. Uh, I've never smoked it, but people told me if you smoke it, it's really powerful. But uh, that's not advice. I just heard it. But if you take a little poppy seed, and even you just chew like a half a teaspoon, you feel the effects. Um, and this, of course, um, is more of a uh, um, little bit a more of a sedative. It's got a sedative, a little heavier quality to it. So it makes you sleepy, uh, no doubt about it. Um, but if you just put a little in the tea, or, or you know, then it can help you relax. Now, hops, of course, we make alcohol. Beer comes from that. You can see these are all organic. And hops is also another sedative. We don't put it in the relaxing tea because it makes you kind of drowsy and, you know, a little heavy and everything. So, but we put it in our sleeping tea. So, look, balance, relaxes the mind, calms the nerves, induces sleep. There's lemon balm again. It's kind of like a filler, really. Um, it's uh, tasty um, and uh, good for the nervous system. Not too stimulating like peppermint's a little bit more stimulating for our digestive system than lemon balm. And then catnip, uh, chamomile, lavender, more, you know, for the flavor and the smell and passion flower again. And California poppy, hops, uh, licorice and rose hips. So this is very sedative formula. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't drive a car after drinking a couple cups. And I've had people tell me they took the hot salt bath and drank the chamomile tea in the bath and literally crawled to their bed and their hands and knees. So a salt bath with a cup of the sedative sleeping tea, which I can assure you is my tea is much stronger than the tea that you get in the store. My herbs are fresher and uh, often of higher quality because many of these herbs have different grades and they're fresher. They haven't been sitting on the shelf as long. So their effect is better. And you see a lot of these uh, off the shelf ones don't put poppy seeds and hops in it, you know, for reasons I mentioned. So mine's, that's a very effective formula. So we could go on, we could look at a few more things we could do here. This is very nice. Um, Vata relaxing oil. It's an Ayurvedic formula. It's relaxing and warming. Warming is very important. Sesame oil, not coconut oil. Coconut oil is cooling. It's not going to help you relax. Olive, ashwagandha, bala, uh, shatavari. And there's that passion flower again. Even though it's an Indian formula and an Indian product, they're putting in the Western herb passion flower. Bring Raj, licorice, um, tulsi, and valerium. Valerium is, of course, related uh, valerium root. So that's all in the oil. Now you take that bath and then you get the vata oil and you massage it over your whole body. Then this oil then goes into your nervous system and your entire body. Very sedative. And right before bed, you can put some sleeping oil on your feet. See, sesame oil, olive oil, ashwagandha, passion flower, chamomile, nutmeg, also a sed sedative, and uh, valerium again. But, you know, more valerium in here. This is going to be more sedative than the vata oil. And a lot of times for babies, even a, you know, six-month-old crying baby, you can just massage this right on their feet alone. They go right to sleep. You know, for an adult who's got a lot of insomnia, sleeping oil 
on your feet isn't going to be enough. But you start combining the hot bath with the relaxing tea, with the oil on your body in the day, you'll be much more relaxed. And then when you come home, you can have the sleeping tea and put on the sleeping oil. And it's very nice. Once you get into the habit, it just becomes your habit. And then you get control of your own mind and your own state of mind. You have to manage your mind like a horse. You know, I ride a horse. And if you're not managing the horse, he'll run crazy and run off, even run off the trail. Or a lot of times when I'm running away from the ranch, the horse wants to turn around and go back to the ranch because he wants his food. Or when I'm going back to the ranch, the horse is all excited and wants to just gallop back and, and avoid even the trails because he wants to go back to the ranch where his food is. So you have to control the horse. And our mind is the same way. It can go off in any direction and go off in different directions. And this creates anxiety. So you have to catch your mind. I think this is a very important point. I've talked about this more in other webinars, but we have to watch and observe our mind and not get lost in our own thoughts. If we start to have negative thoughts and we should hey, talk to ourselves, no, don't think like that. And if we're thinking of the future, what if, what happens if this could happen? I'm worried about this. Well, nobody knows the future. So there's no value to think of the future. Thinking of the future becomes worrying about the future. Worrying about the future creates stress. So you have to be in the moment. And of course, some people have a tendency of the past too. You should have, I should have, he could have, all of these things. They're also creating stress. You have to just focus on what you have to do and don't think too much. Just keep drinking your relaxing tea, keep eating and keep doing what you have to do in life. Now, we have other um, Ayurvedic herbs that are um, more potent because when you take a, a herb, ingest an herb, it's more effective than just a tea. So here's another one here. This is calming and relaxing tea. I mean, formula. There it goes. Reduces nervousness and anxiety. You take one teaspoon and about a half cup of some warm milk. Any time for anxiety and panic. There's ashwagandha, jadamatsi, shankushpi, brahmi, and tagar. Tagar is basically we call Indian valerium root. And ashwagandha we supports the nervous system. It's an adaptogen. Helps us manage stress and gives us energy. Jadamatsi is very similar to passion flower. It's cooling, sweet, supporting the nervous system. Shankushpi also relaxing. Brahmi, the premier herb for our mind. So this is a great combination. If a client is just a little nervous and anxious, then just they can drink the relaxing tea all day. If they're having little panic attacks and I say, have the relaxing tea. And then when you get the panic attack, throw in a teaspoon of the calming formula in the relaxing tea to help to make it more effective. Now, if I took that dose, <laughs> I would go to sleep. But if you're having, if you're anxious, nervous, panicky, then you become normal. So it depends on where your mind's at. Some people say they only take it when they drive. They go on the highway, they go on the, uh, you know, they get nervous and then they take the calming formula before they go for a drive. People have told me that they just take the calming formula only in the morning and that keeps them calm all day because they have stress in the morning. Maybe going off to see the work, off to work or going to face a boss or something like this makes anxiety or driving in the traffic. So they take that one or two teaspoons in the morning and they're good all day long. Other people have to take it two, three times a day. Other people just take it when they feel the anxiety. The herb becomes a tool, your friend. When you're anxious and nervous, you just open up your friend and have your buddy calming formula. Simple, just plants. It's not going to hurt you. No negative side effects, no addictive qualities to it. So you could take it for a long time, you know, until maybe you change your job and change your lifestyle and things like that. And then maybe you don't need it as much. Same with it, it comes for sleeping. We have stronger sleeping formulas. When, Like I said, when you ingest the herb, like in this case, this is a powder. You can put these in a capsule. But when you ingest it, 
over say just making a decoction or a tea then it's going to be more effective this one puts you to sleep and kind of knocks you out tagar which is basically a type of valerium it's just not as heavy as the western valerium is quite sedative um and i only half of this jar is tagar and then there's a jatamatsi shank pushpi that are relaxing and there's sarp ganda which is also used for high blood pressure and a heart that's overactive so you'll find a lot of times people will start taking these and they'll notice their their heart palpitations come down uh, their sleeping's getting better even tinnitus is going away uh, muscle cramps are improving tingling numbness many of these symptoms disappear and first i tell people if you're just having trouble sleeping have the sleeping tea if you're really insomniac and having a lot of trouble then get the sleeping formula and put it right in the sleeping tea and once you get that not it may be the first time you have to do a couple teaspoons and make a strong dose to kind of knock yourself out so to speak and then once you get that one good night of sleep then the next day you're doing better and then the next night you'll need less and less some people take it every night for weeks and then after a while they only need it sometimes and you know also i have in little capsules too sleeping capsules here but it's only one herb it's only the tagar just get a little focus issue there there it is see it's just pure tagar so a couple capsules 30 minutes before bedtime is working quite nice it's the same herb and we have it in different versions too we have like calm and cool this is for somebody who's has a little irritability or a uh, not just irritability but a little anger and irritability and short temper then they can do this one here this one is got it's also cooling so it's no heating herbs for anxious frustration irritability um then we use this one brahmi shock push be john you see no tagar because tagar is heating more brahmi in there um so that's just like a different type of anxiety that's there's some irritability and we have a slightly different formula and here we also have brain ghee we call which is it says for memory but uh it's brahmi basically see the main ingredient there brahmi and uh, you can take one teaspoon of this internally um and this helps to uh bring down settle the mind calm the mind and improve uh thinking and memory and here um this is and say you do have fatigue in the day you're tired you're kind of addicted to your coffee and you just can't imagine getting off then we give you um, an adrenal tea which we also have and then uh, an adrenal formula here see adrenal formula and what's the first ingredient ashwagandha because we know ashwagandha is a wonderful adaptogen just like ginseng is a chinese adaptogen um, that gives you energy and minus is uh helps you manage stress at the same time now we support that with virari khan which is a type of uh, uh, potato actually very grounding heavy bala which means strength brahmi there's that brahmi again and a little cinnamon licorice ginger and cumin to balance it and ginger just to help you digest it because it's kind of a heavy formula and uh, yeah here's and here's another one we can put in our nasal passages see it's called calm and clear so we do this one for people having anxiety plus uh breathing problems see it's helping with clarity and we put it right in our nose here i have one here on my desk this is also brahmi oil and you just get a couple teaspoons we have different ones some that are only relaxing <laughs> yep and some that are relaxing and clearing the nasal passages and so other ones that are just um, clearing for respiratory problems this one i have here is brahmi ghee brahmi oil and it feels very good very calm not like sedative calming but just it keeps takes that helps you take the edge off so there we go so that's a whole so you can see that there's a lot of uh herbal supplements that we can take to help to uh, manage the state of our nervous system and uh, and they're very effective they work very well 
Um, you can see many uh, testimonials that I have from people who have taken it, who said that they didn't sleep well for years, had anxiety uh, attacks for years, and um, now they're finding relief just with these little uh, herbal substances. So let's see. Here, we'll just uh, share the screen a little bit here. We don't know the little button. And we can see right here. Um, here we can see um, this person had migraines and vertigo. And after the oils and the herbs, um, they felt better. Um, the herbs, oils, and teas are definitely what I needed. Balancing my mood. Um, just after a couple days of taking the calming tea and adrenal tea, my daily rhythm improved and I felt much better. This is somebody in Dubai. Um, and here's a great ref testimonial. If anybody out there is experiencing anxiety, I recommend Kabir. This person's in Washington, D.C. Um, they're saying if anybody out there is experiencing anxiety, insomnia, depression, panic attacks, from my experience, uh, I would advise you to try a natural approach. And uh, his herbs and treatments really work. You can't deny that they don't work. If you take a couple teaspoons of that sleeping formula, you're sedated. It doesn't matter whether you believe in herbs or not. If you drink that relaxing tea all day, you notice you're more relaxed. Um, today, my mind is much calmer. This may be only after one day. That's Nashville, um, that's uh, North Carolina. The calm powder is really helping me in those times of anxiety. I can't believe that my health has improved as well as my sleep. My sleeping issues disappeared within a few days. That's right. This sleeping problems can and it can be improved very quickly with these home remedies. And my stress, stress levels are uh, down right away. And this is due to, of course, these um, change in diet some new home remedies, and, of course, the herbal formulas, which really become your, um, your friends that you, you, that you look for um, to uh, go to whenever you have um, anxiety or nervousness. So I hope that helped you. Um, and, you know, you, there's nothing wrong with taking some magnesium at night. Uh, magnesium helps relax the muscles. And uh, but you should buy you shouldn't buy cheap magnesium like magnesium citrate and things like this. You should buy a food based magnesium product. And also um, same when it goes for uh, B vitamins. Many people are taking too much B vitamins and they're taking uh, B vitamins that are over stimulating to their to themselves. And uh, if you take too much B12, for example, then you are going to overstimulate yourself. I've seen many people taking B12 vitamins in such amount that they're creating anxiety. So be careful taking cheap or synthetic uh, B vitamins. Okay? But otherwise, you know, taking a B complex, a food-based one in the day from a good company making food-based can be good. Or magnesium at night will also help you. But more important is if you're eating these three meals a day and eating these calming uh, foods like grains are considered a calming food. So then you should have enough of these B vitamins and, you know, legumes. And they also have plenty of, of magnesium in them as well. So eating four meals a day can be very helpful. So if you need more assistance, you need some guidelines, you'd like me to go through your diet and give you some home remedies and, of course, provide you with some of these herbs, then, you know, feel free to contact me. Now we're having a very special lockdown discount right now. That's right. Lockdown discount, special discount. You just mention here um, that you want it. In fact, I think everybody's getting the lockdown discount. You see here it says on screen that I'm giving a discount for Skype appointments for people who contact me. But right now, everybody's getting the same discount and I call it the lockdown discount. So now's the best time to uh, work on your health because you're home, you're cooking your own foods and um, you got time to take the herbs and things like that. So I, I hope it helped you. I hope some of these home remedies helped you and I hope you learned 
that some of the things you may be doing in your life and your diet may be contributing to your problem. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.